Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to do a detailed walk around on the My Twin Dream. I'm going to take you through the components that are used on this build, show you how I've run some of the wires and where I've put them, explain a little bit why. I'm going to walk you around the ground station as well as the antenna tracker and the control box for the antenna tracker. So let's get started. Powering the Twin Dream, I have two KDE 2814XF 775KV motors. If you've used KDE motors in the past, you know that they are very, very smooth, very efficient motors. Uh, they're very nice. Along with the motors, I'm also using 35 amp KDE ESCs. Uh, they pair very nicely with this. For the props, we're using the APC 11 by five. They have been balanced. Moving on to the front of the plane, we have the GoPro. That can also be swapped out for a 360 cam or really any kind of cam. I do have a pan and tilt gimbal that I have put on before. Don't have it running right now. I don't feel it's necessary. Also on the front, we have an FPV camera and the pitot tube with a cover over it. Pitot tube is used for the airspeed sensor. And up underneath the fuselage, we have another FPV camera for the downward facing view. Running along the side, we have some CAT6 flat shielded cable that's coming out of the fuselage and running up to the VTX, which has then a low pass filter on it going to the Dragonlink Dipole 1.3 gigahertz antenna. Powering all of this is a 35 amp hour 4S lithium ion battery. There are 40 individual cells in this run in parallel 410. Onto the back, you can see we're using the Pit Lab Autopilot and OSD. I also have a separate 2500 milliamp hour 4S battery that is being used to power all of the electronics like the Autopilot, the servos, the GPS, the cameras, and moving on to the CCBEC Pro that you see there, and also then the Dragonlink High Power 1500 milliwatt receiver. The servos that I'm using for the elevator and the rudder are the high-tech HS65MGs. And for the landing gear, it's a custom job, but I find it works very, very well. I'll link to all the parts down in the description. For the tail gear, it's also kind of a custom job. I bought the parts also off Amazon, and I'll link to them as well. And we're just using an El Cheapo Hobby King servo. The entire plane is laminated. And we have the Dragon Link antenna running up the rudder. The Twin Dream is very forgiving in regards to how you can fly it with the CG. You can have it a little tail heavy, you can have it a little nose heavy, and if you're running a good autopilot, it'll level it out. However, as you can see here, I really like making sure that it is balanced out, has a slight downward glide path. That way, in the event of a power failure, I can trust that I would be able to glide it back in. So here we have the antenna tracker power box. Now, what we're looking at here is a 12 volt sealed lead acid battery. And coming in on the side, we have two ethernet connectors. Those are going up for the signal to the servos from the ground station, and also the video signal back from the receivers over to the ground station. For the transmitter, I'm using the Tyrannus X9E. That's the tray version of the popular X9D. I have extended stick ends on here and I've made some customizations to it. In addition to the X9E, I have the Dragonlink V3 Advanced, the full size. I have a notch filter and I have the IB Crazy Moxon 433 megahertz antenna. On the back, I have a 2200 three cell battery that is powering it. You can see in the upper right corner, I have a push button. That is to activate the head tracking if I were to connect head tracking to it. Moving around to this side, you can see that the blue wrapped cable going in, that is what is coming out for the PPM signal to the Dragon Link. And then right next to that, you can see the barrel connector for the power. 
On the left upper corner, you can see the head tracking plug. Moving on to the ground station, you can see my temporary numbering for port one and two of the shielded CAT6. That is running both in and out. So we have bi-directional here. We have signal coming in to the ground station from the antenna and out to the antenna tracker. We've got the fast shark goggles for recording the OSD as well as viewing the in-flight data. Moving on to the front of the ground station, we have the ReadyMade RC 12 inch FPV monitor. Just to the right of that, we have the Pit Lab ground station. And just below the ground station, we have two fans. One of them is blowing in and one of them is blowing out. Just to the left of the fans, behind the ABS piece, is a 5.8 gigahertz video transmitter, and just above that is the USB port for upgrading the ground station. The video transmitter is used as a repeater. Moving on to the main part, we've got the Android tablet for using the FPV Tracker app, which allows me to see in real time where the plane is overlaid on Google Maps. Very, very handy. And behind this, we have the AC Infinity cooling system. Again, we have one pulling in and one pushing out. Inside, there is a thermostat. It's all automatic. I set it to what the temperature I want it to be and let it go. The red switch is for powering on the repeater or video transmitter. And just to the left of that, we have the main power switch in the bottom left, a voltage readout, and under the cap, we have two USB ports for charging perhaps the tablet, your phone, whatever. Just below that, we have the SMA connector for the repeater. So we will put a FPV transmit antenna onto that. And then just below that, we have the charge ports for the 12 volt sealed lead acid battery that is underneath this panel. And below that, we have a 12 volt power and also a video, which is going to the Fat Shark goggles. So, moving on to the antenna tracker, you can see that we also have port one and two here. That's for receiver one and two. And then we have the charge port down at the bottom there for the sealed lead acid battery that is in here. On the top, we have two fans again, one pulling and one pushing. We have the two 12 volt powers going out to the receivers, and then we have audio and video for each of the receivers. On the front, we have the pan and tilt for the servos of the actual tracker itself. Here we have two of the ReadyMade RC 900 to 1.3 gigahertz audio video receivers. On top of that, we have the high pass filters. They're the HP F800s. I find that they just help clean up everything just a little bit more. And those are going out to the different antennas. The actual pan and tilt is all from Servo City. The Yagi antenna is a custom made tuned to an almost perfect 1.0 SWR. The servos are the winch servos, the high-tech HS785HBs. Onto the front, for one of the antennas, we have the video aerial systems 1.3 gigahertz bi-quad, and again, we have a 1280 megahertz or 1.3 gigahertz Yagi antenna. All right, let's get this thing up in the air, have a little fun.